I think uh, we at Sekem we have a we have a special answer to that because the situation in in Sekem is so um, or in Egypt is so is so special. We have the situation that that um, ninety six percent of of our land is 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 sand is made from sand, so we do not actually have much soil available. Um, added to that, we have a great water scarcity, very very little water available, and the water that is available is usually contaminated. It's, it's either very salty in the desert or it's not uh, readily usable when it's coming from the Nile because it's coming from a source that is contaminated by human waste very, very much and it's misused. So we have the problem that uh, all the resources that we have, be it, be it soil or be it water or whatever else, is so scarce and so rare that, that, that we need to be extremely careful when, when working with it. So for us, that is um, basically the main reason um, why we have to protect the little soil that we have in Egypt and that we have to try and develop and enlarge that through organic um, biodynamic means that, that, that we have available at our disposal. Well, I think one of the biggest challenges, again, um, Egypt has a, has a special answer to that question, is that, that we need to make, make sure that we, we grow our food um, sustainably. And that means that we do not um, uh, prioritize um, short-term gain or short-term yields and profits over um, long-term long -term insurance that the resources we work with um, are sustainable and can be, can be used also by the next generations. Um, as I said, in Egypt the situation is very, very problematic because there is so little resource uh, readily available for us to work with. That means that we have to be extremely careful when we use it and have to make sure that we use it in such a way that it regenerates properly and that it remains usable for the coming generations. Oh, I think it's, it's, it's a very big role and I think everyone at Sekem would probably agree with it. I mean, we again, we, we in Egypt or in the Arab world have a special answer to that question because we have so many youth, so many young people in these countries. That's the one thing we have, we are, we have abundantly available. Um, about 65% of the people of the Egyptian population is under 22. So that's a huge, huge number, and the figures are rare, um, roughly the same also in other Arab countries. There's not much difference there. So um, most of these young people do not have a true vocational perspective today. They do not really know how to apply the skills that they have in a proper way or in a useful way, even though many of them would love, or if not all of them, would love to do exactly that. So we have to give them some, some perspective that fits into uh, the greater scheme of things, of development, green development that is necessary in Egypt and other Arab countries and still is relevant to them. So they have the, the impression or get the feeling that what they do is, is important and is useful for everyone else. Well, I, I said earlier today in my workshop um, that I very much liked the, the, the quote that, that Michael Wilde quoted this, this morning by Andrea LaPay, who, who, who had once said that you need to, to remember that with every purchasing decision that you make, you do not just purchase a product, but you are making a decision, a conscious decision for, for the world you would like to live in. And that is pretty much the same that we try to communicate to the people also who buy second products. It's um, with everything, we need to make people understand that today you can't just unconsciously buy a product and just expect that it will, be, um, will have been produced in, a, in an acceptable way. You need to become the conscious consumer who sees his or her own purchasing decision as a conscious way of, of shaping this world the way you would like it to be in the future. If you don't do this, um, that is not really an option. Um, we, we all have to learn that, that this is the only way to move forward because we, the consumers, are, as my colleagues from Sekem say, the, the sleeping giant that unfortunately hasn't woken up yet. If we made more of these decisions in such a way, we could shape much, much more um, of how the world would look like. We just have to make that decision. Well, I 
think the fact that you do something is already um, the biggest thing in it because today we are not used to going out there and doing things to, to changing the world as we would like it to be. I just spoke about this with a friend I met here a few days ago and we were uh, speaking about the risk today of becoming scientifically stupid because um, we, we trust so much it on, on, on science and on the way science seems to tell us the truth about the world, which is, uh, of course, in a certain way uh, very true, but in many other ways it's a very reductionist, uh, simplistic way on life. If you look at agriculture, if you look at what you're doing here, if you look at so many things, the way we conduct business, the way we build our economies, the way we live our lives, all that has a deep connection to the human beings that, that lead these lives. So to, to um, uh, look at agriculture as an industrial undertaking and not as something that is deeply connected with human lives and, and the social world is, is a very simplistic view that is not, um, not, um, that is not true to life. So I think what we need to do is today understand that, that science or the way we understand and look at the world has its proper place in life and is good the way it is, but that, that should not make us forget that we still need to act and that from acting and from shaping the world we learn at least as much as we do from science. And that is something that we tend to forget very often because so many in so many situations in life I think we we, we are um, more or less obsessively focused on uh, having the numbers or to being able to prove things or explain things scientifically while forgetting that nothing much has changed uh, as long as we haven't done anything and uh, just understanding things a little bit better is good but only if uh, the deeds follow, follow our understanding.